Are we talking about mental health now? Nice. I mean, we could. <laughs> And that I think is very inspirational for many people. But since you're talking about corporates, it's the balance sheet that you don't see. And I think it's for us as uh, leaders to really start empathizing with mental health issues. I think leaders need to be more vulnerable. I think it's going to be very powerful. Kiran and Anand, I wanted to start by asking, what does mental health mean to the both of you? I for one believe that uh, we have ignored mental health in a big way all these decades. And we know it's there. We know that there's a huge stigma associated with mental illness. And I just felt that we ought to do something about it because like any disease it's manageable it's yeah. treatable yeah and i think that's why i got so involved in and interested in mental health and i really um got very uh interested in helping with your you know initiative and your mission of uh, you know addressing this space you know um, anand for me i think mental health is a little bit since we're talking about corporates it's the balance sheet that you don't see i think everybody looks at the pnl but you hardly look at the balance sheet so it's uh, mental health at a personal level is really about well being yeah. but i think at the company and the community level it's about taking care and making sure you get a return later but it is important to take care of and it's hidden you don't see it mm-hmm. every day uh you know a physical ailment is much easier like kiran said to actually take care of but this you don't see yeah so i think really taking care of that um both at a company at a community and a personal level is incredibly important which is also a little bit the reason i think to get involved i think in the foundation with the foundation when did you first realize that it was important for you at a personal level to take care of your mental health was there a defining moment was it an experience was it an experience with somebody else where you said you know where you had that moment where you felt okay this is important I think there were two moments for me. I think firstly look intellectually I think we all get it right. I think mental health is important, you know, large percentage of people get impacted, productivity goes down. But for me there were two moments where I think it became quite real. I think the first was actually when I was at Mintra and I think you know business was doing great, you know things are booming and you find that everybody all the time is actually quite stressed, uh very anxious and always on the edge, mm-hmm. right? And for me that sort of getting my senior management team and myself to sort of realize that it's um there's something wrong and that we need to sort of operate differently for me was one thing which made it from intellectual to a little bit more here and now and it's around the people around me the other actually is you know i have three daughters and i think adolescent mental health is a big issue right um and i think especially in girls so i think talking to them and learning from them about the fact that this is important again sort of made it real i think mm. these were at least the i would say at least personal triggers for me right i think intellectually we get it but i yeah. think personally it became quite important to therefore say i want to do something about it correct right uh, both for myself but also for the broader community and so on right i think that was i think these were the two triggers at least for me so for me i think i've had two triggers as well one is of course as an entrepreneur very often you're alone you know it is facing lonely. challenges uh facing failures and i know how stressful that can yeah. be but equally i think i saw that same stress uh, in some of my team members mm-hmm. who when we faced obstacles and failures uh, it was a very stressful time so i realized that you know pe- people could break down people could you know suddenly get into bouts of anxiety which i think was very very uh you know not a very nice feeling to go through but i think the second trigger for me was that i became a caregiver to my late husband um he suffered from dementia mm-hmm. and i know how difficult it is to deal with mental illness of course it's a very different type, type of, of uh, yes. mental health issue but i think a lot of people in our society suffer from aging age related mental issues mm, yes. which i think is a huge burden on our health systems 
and of course dementia alzheimers you know but then at a different level you also have schizophrenia you have anxiety you have depression and i see this all the time in an organization like ours and i think it's for us as uh, leaders to really start empathizing with mental health issues in a very very different way because we often kind of either want to turn a blind eye or we feel that okay this is inevitable right or that this is something which uh, others need to deal with right so i have had personal experiences and i felt we needed to do something kiran did that take a toll on you as a as a caregiver because i think one of the things that we don't focus enough on is of course there's the people with mental illness but also their caregivers so yep what kind of a toll uh you know has that taken on you yeah i think uh, it does take a toll but for me i think it made me stronger and it made me more caring and made me far more sensitive to what it's all about what are some of the things that the both of you do today with all of the awareness with the work that we've done now with the live love la foundation with your personal experience or having interacted with people with mental illness what are some of those things that you all do every day that help you take care of your mental health and well-being i think exercise is very important True. i'm very very disciplined about exercising every day kiran i have to see you in a gym I the vision of you in a gym <laughs> why i'm there every morning i walk i'm in the gym i do yoga wow and i, uh, I didn't know this, this side either. of you i didn't know this either so well it's a routine i follow every morning um actually walking is thanks to john my late husband he used to always love walking, walking. so we used to walk around our compound uh several times and he always made me do that and that's a sort of a habit i've formed but apart from that i think um, you must make some time for yourself uh, you know to well people like to meditate i'm not a good meditator <laughs> but uh, i do like to listen to music i like to read all this is your personal time you yeah. need to have that kind of special personal time and then more than anything else I think to make you mentally strong you need to engage with family and friends. Yeah. I think that is a great support system. Absolutely. Yeah. Keeps you grounded and connected and connected. Yeah yeah it does. It really does. I mean I think just maybe building a little bit Kiran I actually do like meditating. I um so for me one routine is I actually spend 20 minutes every day. and i think it makes makes i mean it creates a lot of energy for me i think during the day you have um, to teach me how to meditate yeah <laughs> host this. so um so i think this is one thing that i think is really, that a morning routine for you a morning routine so i wake up very early um so you know it may seem like late night for many people but i sort of do between 4 and 5 right so i think for me that really helps and i 4 and 5 in the morning yeah so what time do you go to bed i go to sleep by about maybe 10 uh 10:30 but i wake up by 4:30 4:30 so i think for me that really helps that morning routine i don't I hope do everyone's devices. making notes um I, i don't do devices that's really helpful i think uh i also end up walking um i i and i think greenery for me makes a big difference i think just from a routine standpoint so incidentally both where i i try and do a lot of my meetings at work mm-hmm. as walking meetings we're in kormangala next to the police park and then i do all my meetings walking around and i think that itself actually reduces Is. a little bit of the the third i think i fully agree with what kiran said i think it's a little bit like you know have people that are not directly associated with your work day in and day out correct because it provides you a very different sort of mental frame uh to do it. So, I'm not as good with exercise except for the walking. So, I'm trying to see if I can do We're all that. encouraging Anand yeah. to so. be a little more physically active or, you know, work out or Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting there. Getting there. 20 minutes a day. Come on. Yeah. In your opinion, do you believe that the perception of mental health has evolved or changed? uh in the workplace or in the startup community say in the last couple of years and if it has then then how i think um uh deepika it has uh firstly i think post pandemic there is now more awareness on mental health uh i'll talk a little bit about startups right since i've just sort of right. been uh, over the last 7 8 years i feel like uh the pandemic actually caused a little bit of 
a spurt in issues i think right isolation not actually having a community that you can connect with etc and i think there's more awareness i think when people are coming back into work so i think that's the positive i do think however uh, startups in general i think there is a lot of uncertainty a lot of stress uh, a lot of unknowns right and therefore the propensity to actually have stress automatically happen is high and i think we need to be doing a lot more more about it right and i think we need to be talking a lot more about it i mean i'll tell you at mensa for example we do have a helpline mm-hmm. we do have resources but how many people actually take advantage of it how many people actually call i think there's still sig- stigma associated with it and i think that needs to be addressed um and needs to be led from the front i think leaders need to be more vulnerable leaders yes. need to open up yeah i think we need to make managers a lot more empathetic which we were talking about earlier yeah that combination i think needs to i think progress a lot lot more but i think we have a good beginning i think there is some momentum now much more than i saw maybe 5 7 years ago so i think to that extent it's improving but a lot more work to be done so you're saying the facilities are available maybe not to all startups but yeah. at least at mensa you do right uh, but i think you also want to create a culture where people feel safe, safe. uh and feel safe in a way that they feel vulnerable where they can share yes. and don't feel judged don't feel like they're going to lose their jobs and be able to communicate yeah resources i would say are a third of the problem I think two thirds of the problem is the culture that you mentioned. Correct. I think the big thing you have to sort of, I think, emphasize is uh, your career is not going to get impacted if you're vulnerable and take help about mental health. And I think the only way you can change that is actually to start from the top. I think if me and my direct team actually can't be vulnerable and can't talk about it and communicate. I think then it becomes very difficult for somebody to open up because they feel like there'll be some bias, right? At some review, somebody will say, "Oh, is this the person who's going to get the next big opportunity?" Correct. And I think that is the part that I think we need to change. And I think that's that's I think the cultural change. It, but is that possible, Anand? Because the startup world and the startup community is so fast-paced. Yeah. And it's easy to talk about work-life balance, but is that truly possible? Yeah. Yeah, no. I think it's a great <laughs> question. I I don't know whether work-life balance is fully possible because you're taking somebody else's money, you need a return on invested capital. I think return on investment in mental health is something that I think is a metric that I think is worth introducing. I think lots of studies done, but 20 30% productivity goes away in in organizations when mental health issues are there. Yeah. So I think it's it is actually it it makes financial sense. Correct. Also. Do, also. While also looking at it, at it through the lens of empathy. Absolutely. So I'm saying as far as investors and startups are concerned I think painting the picture of productivity and improvement is important. And I think as leaders and managers I think the empathy is important. Yeah. I think both need to get done. Yeah. Yeah, so I think taking off from what you've said i mean you've said most of it but i would say yes i think the pandemic has brought a lot of focus on mental health issues corporates have not quite understood the stress level that both uh, aspiration and competition brings post the pandemic i think uh, the corporate world has understood the magnitude of health uh, true uh, you know issues yeah. i mean uh, mental health issues so when we talk about attrition all this actually the root cause is stress right and you need to see how you can address that stressful environment that people operate in the second thing is i think being empathetic to high performers especially when they start absenting themselves from work yeah. when they start becoming reclusive when they start disengaging yeah. at various levels those are early warning signs, signs. and very often uh, such uh, you know sort of behavioral changes uh, often are uh, dealt with in a very uh, severe manner uh, and very often people resign people leave the organization but that's not really the solution at least at our organization we have actually started uh, detecting and diagnosing these early warning signals we've been very empathetic mm. and believe me when you do that they really you know appreciate the corporate backing they get and they come back much much stronger and in fact their performance levels even increase so i think he's right you know it's about investing in mental health because there's a huge return on that investment and i think when you do your annual health checkups 
I really think mental health ought to be part of that. part of it. Good point. Why do you think it took us a pandemic to realize the the value or the importance of focusing on our mental health, not just as individuals but also as as organizations? Because I think as people, as societies, and as organizations, there's always been a stigma associated with mental health. Uh, it's only uh, during the pandemic that all this came to the fore. So in a way, I think. You know, we should be grateful to the pandemic. Yeah, to actually- better late than never. But yeah. what are some of the, in your opinion, what are some of the tools that organizations and startups can use to sort of help their teams, their organizations, yeah. their people? So I personally think, to you know, Anand's point, I think you really need to sensitize sensitize managers. Mm-hmm. to be more empathetic i think managers can be very transactional and very ruthless and i think often that also causes a lot of problems yeah so i think you need managers to be more empathetic you know we are just talking about uh, people in general but <coughs> believe me women also have it very hard so i think very often we realize that women have a very tough uh, work life balance yeah. you know very often I think uh, women, although harder. we say that uh, they are multi great multitaskers, it does the fact take a is it it is not that easy. Yes. What also the pandemic has taught us is that there is a remote working model that yeah. works effectively. Yeah. yeah. And I think we should take full advantage of that. I think organizations do need to look at a work life balance, not in terms of what we think of as a work life balance. but in terms of a balance between remote and on site working right uh, many uh, of course functions may not uh, be possible like a manufacturing operation but many others can do that and we should look at that you know uh, it's not necessary for people to come to work or to the office every day yeah. but does that create a better work life balance is the question especially for women yeah. i think this is quite important secondly i think having a lot of uh, helplines having a very important uh, focus on mental health which is talked about quite uh, openly uh, will remove the stigma from this whole area so i think corporations can do a lot but also i think the most important aspect of uh, you know corporate training corporate behavior is about empathy yeah Let me just, uh, Kiran, just to add to that, I fully agree on the empathy and the training of the managers part. Um, I think a few other things that we do. So I think the mechanics of having um, helpline, you know, making it confidential, making it third party, etc. I think most companies can and should do because one, it doesn't cost that much, yeah. and it's easy to implement. I think the cultural part of making sure that you can actually use it is the hard part, which I think is what you need to train your managers on. A few other things that we try and do. One is, I think, to provide a little bit more meaning to the hard work that you actually have. Right? I mean, you know, you work very hard, but you're not working hard generally just because you have to work hard. You work hard for a purpose. Correct. The second thing that we have tried um, is creating communities within which are interest groups. I mean, we have a breakfast walk interest group. We have a soccer. Group. We have a badminton group, and I think these start to create a bit of yeah, communities. Employee Correct. engagement. Employee engagement, and the reason I'm saying this, Kiran, is one. I mean, the average age at a Mensa, for example, is 24, 25, and 80% of your life is actually work. Yeah. Right. Um, and therefore, to to help them create a community, this becomes an instant community for you. Yeah. So we try a bit of that, yeah. and, and that again, engagement helps. And again, it goes helps. back to our earlier discussion at a personal level. That that engagement with family and friends, friends. is yes. so important. It's so important. So it's the same concept. You're saying, but it's exactly the same concept. But you're creating that within because you yeah. sort you're of you're moving away you're, from your family and friends, and this is your family friends. away from. Correct. That's right. From your yeah. That's right. So I think those are the two maybe additions in addition to managers and empathy. Right? Yeah, and I, I think, think I think uh, what is most important, I feel, Anant and Deepika, is that how do we at a corporate level remove the stigma? Yeah. You know. Nobody is, uh, you know, worried about sharing with anyone that they suffer from diabetes Correct. or any yes. other kind that's of. That's the conversation uh, we're always having, yeah. right? Or even cardiovascular disease. People are very sympathetic and helpful. So why should they feel, uh, you know, worried about sharing with others that they have a mental health issue? That's what corporate India or corporates in general around the world should do. is to try and remove that uh, you know stigma 
uh, from mental health. It's like the airplanes, right? I'm going to use this analogy where, you know, you have the oxygen mask, you have to first put it on for yourself. Yeah. And then you put it on for the passengers around you. So I think if the senior leaders don't do it, it's very hard to take stigma away. I think just being involved with Live, Love, Laugh at the Mensa level has made a huge difference because people actually, by the way, believe that you can come and talk about mental health. Yeah. Right? Because I think actions count louder than words. So, um, being able to have that conversation and making sure that the first person that has that conversation is is actually successful yeah. and it's actually beneficial to that person, it has made one big difference. And second is, I think, just the fact that the three of us are having this conversation, yeah. I think will help, is my sense. Because at least, you know, yeah. you hear people yeah. talk about the fact that it's... It's okay. Uh, it's okay. And I think, uh, by the way, I'll tell you, I've sort of done the professional consultant. I've been the CEO and now it's like founder and it gets lonelier and lonelier, right? Yeah. Uh, and you don't want to talk about the fact that you are vulnerable in any any manner because it's just hard to do so, right? Because you're also pushing people on this. Somebody else is pushing you on something. So you don't want to talk about it. I think the minute you get over that and talk about it, I think suddenly mm-hmm. gates open up mm-hmm. and I think your directs start to actually talk about the fact of the issues and then their directs too. And that's how it spreads in the Correct. organization, I think. No, and to your point, you know, Anant, uh, I think it also helps me to actually, uh, you know, sensitize people and socialize the advocacy yeah. around mental health in, in my company. And I know that at Biocon, we often uh, have an opportunity to talk about different aspects of uh, uh, healthcare. And one thing I do talk about is the live, love, laugh uh, experience yeah. that I have, especially in rural India. Correct. And there I've often talked to people saying, do you know what uh, our efforts have yielded in rural India? Do you know that people, and they know how uh, what a huge stigma there is in rural India, much more than in urban India. And how we have basically reintegrated these people into the economic mainstream. Yeah. How individuals who have otherwise been sort of ostracized and isolated from society have come back to society and that I think is very inspirational for many people and that motivates many people to talk about health, uh, mental health issues in a much more open way yeah. than they would have in the past so I think things are changing Yeah, I think the more open we are as leaders Yep. Set an example for you know for the rest of our teams and, and thank for our you organization for <laughs> starting this whole conversation because you know without your coming out in the open, yep. I don't think the Live Love Laugh Foundation would have started, and I think that was the start of it all for all of us. Absolutely, absolutely. What more do you think organizations and startups can do to better their already existing systems? Um, I would say, I think in most startups, for example, I don't think there is a conversation about mental health at all. You will talk about funding, you'll talk about evaluation, Outfit, you'll talk about yeah. a growth number, but you never talk about mental health, right? So I think just having awareness, I think is the first big step. And I think uh, there is more that needs to happen. I think just as startups, I mean, you know, th- there are organizations today in the, I think the corporate world, the CIIs of the world, etc., actually do some of this. I think for startups, I think since it's so early, some of that is not there. But I think one big thing is just as an industry, having us talk more about it and being aware of it, I think will help. And I think if you're not aware and don't measure, then nothing happens. Yeah. So I think that's one big thing I think that can happen. Uh, it creates transparency, mm-hmm. right? I think the second one is, um, I think just willing to invest even a little bit. Um, you know, uh, most times you don't know what you the mean cost monetarily is. Monetarily? Monetarily, yeah. right? And I think they're small investments, but I think they yield a large return. And I think a lot of times you don't make those small mm. investments, right? It doesn't cost that much to get a help. Yeah. It doesn't cost that much to create a employee engagement program, Kiran, that you, you know, that we talked about. Yeah. But just doing that, and therefore, one of the things we have done is we have a terrific person who leads our people function. And I think, see, in every organization, there are some triggers. Mm. We talked about the CEO and the founder being one. I think the people function can be another. And I think if you can have someone enlightened there or actually teach them, then it becomes a fulcrum for a lot of change that happens to the rest of the organization. I think the third, by the way, is actually investors and venture capital investors, right? In particular, as you think about startups, I think talking to them about this and getting them involved Mm. is also interesting. How? Uh, I think it has to be in a numerical way, Deepika, in my view. I think it has to be a return that I think they see, which Mm. we spoke about earlier. Yeah. I do think there's a return. I just think it's a matter of showing them and measuring, right? And I think having that conversation with them 
will also start to change the dialogue around it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just taking off from where you said, yeah. first and foremost, you're talking about startups. <laughs> If you think about corporates, larger companies, yeah. I think we keep talking about trying to diagnose attrition, right. right? And a large part of that attrition actually has to do with certain aspects of mental health issues, which we never recognize. I mean, we don't even want to recognize it. How do we basically ensure that you know workplaces are measured mm. by the employee engagement levels and here i really think that one of the things we should look at is the tenure that that employees have, have at an organization yeah. i know for instance that many investors yep. look at organizations where you have a way, uh, have employees low attrition, and long uh, low attrition with long tenures yep. Yep. and i know that they 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 look at such organizations saying that these organizations are stable mm. sustainable and uh, long lasting that's the way they look at it and all this comes from the fact that you are a close knit group you are yeah. a caring group yeah. there is empathy yeah. that's why people stay with those organizations Correct. what is that one last message that you would want to share with your community empathy i think we spoke a lot about it i think if there's one word i would say empathy and leading from the front empathy and leading from the front Nice. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's really about understanding that you know investing in mental health care is investing for a much more sustainable business. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the way I would look at it saying yeah. that if you ignore it, I don't think you can you know be prepared for the future. Anand and Kiran thank you so much for this conversation I've definitely taken a lot back from this and I hope all of our viewers have too thank you so much thank you thank Deepika you.